Hello, Bo. back again with another speed build, and today we're going to be in my ballistic challenge, Grips Halago. Amazing. My old western steampunky post apocalyptic, lots of big words, <laughs> BACC. And this is for the new family, the Trouts. Now, usually, well, for the last family, Mirza. I had a cute little introductory thing where we introduce him to the sheriff and how much the sheriff like, goes up like him. <laughs> so Mirza comes into like the um he's just very disrespectful. He's very braggadocious. Like he just thinks he's all that because he comes from like royalty and stuff. So he just he's not used to like having to like treat people with respect kind of thing. And he's just very immature. And Kalataka, the sheriff, she just isn't rocking with that whatsoever. She's a woman that demand not doesn't demand respect. She just expects it from everyone because of the person she is. So they don't get along. But with Sylvie, the woman that this house is for and her family, she's just a regular person. Like she's just a regular gal. Like I like Sylvie. She's she's nice. She's really nice. Um, the story with Sylvie is that her late husband actually died in a boating accident so she kind of just moved away from that but one thing I love about her that I'm excited to play with is the fact that she's a family sim like she wants a big happy family she wants lots of kids but she doesn't want to date she's aromantic so I think that would be really interesting to play with as like she's bisexual i think i'm gonna play as bisexual i'm not too sure but bisexual aromantic she doesn't want to date whatsoever like that's just not her vibe she still does want to have children and like live that kind of life of like being a mother and like raising people so like she really does enjoy that so i think it'd be really fun to play that it's a very unique way of playing a family sim because usually you know family sims always get like married and do all that rest at her but she just wants to be alone and she wants to put her kids first which i really really admire now i kind of like have this vision in my mind that her and her late husband kind of had like a not a marriage of convenience but i guess it is a marriage of convenience where they're just like neither of us are really feeling each other like that like i don't want to date you you don't want to date me but i want kids and you kind of want people to start telling you to get married let's just get married and like see how things are so even though she didn't love him romantically she loved him as a friend also the husband is technically nervous because i just used him for genetics i didn't because i wasn't gonna play as him so i just used him as like a genetic donor kind of thing just so the kids look unique i had a lot of other sims saved in my sim bin but I was just like, wouldn't it be so cool if, like, Nervous is the dad? I don't know. I just thought it was really cool. So, yeah, technically Nervous is, I don't know, in a straight relationship. I always see Nervous as gay. So, maybe that was, like, him. I don't know what he was up to. But he's dead now, so it doesn't matter what he's up to, innit? Oh, my God. On some different news, I was reading a webtoon called Hammergramps. Oh, my God. I've been obsessed. Not obsessed, but I've really been enjoying it. And what it's about is about this guy. Um, when he was, like, in his 20s, he wanted to become a magician. And so he literally, like, said to his parents, I want to be a magician. And they were like, we can't afford to get you into magic school because they were, like, dirt poor. They're like, we can't afford to, like, pay the tuition for this magic school. So you're going to have to, like, sort something out until then and wait until you can go to magic school. And he was like, mm, no. And he ran away from home. And he was like, well, I need to earn money for this magic school tuition fee. So he starts working in the mines with a hammer and stuff. And he's working in the mines for like 50 years trying to raise money for the tuition fee. Because the tuition fee is like something extortionate. And he just doesn't have that money for it. So he's working in these mines. 50 years go by. Finally has the money. He goes to the magic school. And he, they're like, um, sorry, only students can come here. And he's like, oh, no, I'm like here to pay tuition fee. And they're like, oh, maybe he's like paying for his grandson because this man is like 70. Like he's so old. So they're like, maybe he's like paying for his grandson. Like how nice of him. He goes there. He's walking to the magic school. Then there's a big, massive dragon. that's like attacking the school while all the teachers have gone out somewhere else. So this third year student, I forgot her face. I forgot her name. But this third year student, she's like, okay, I'm going to have to like sort this thing out because like I'm the one person, but like I need to sort this out hammer grams literally get get his hammer out and just starts whacking away he doesn't use any magic whatsoever he just beats this dragon's ass with just a hammer and the fucking the girl the third year student she's like um what the hell because she was really putting in work like doing all these fireballs and fire spells to, like get this dragon out the way 
this guy just whacks it like with a big hammer and then whacks the demon as well and he's like oh okay sorted that out he goes to like the headmaster of the wizard school who's like if you think of like a wizard you would think of this guy <laughs> he looks exactly like a wizard he goes to him the wizard um headmaster's like do you know what since you saved the school from like certain doom you can just have a full ride scholarship so you don't even need to pay the magic bees but like as you're reading the story it becomes apparent like him being in these minds is was really good for like his magic and his manner and stuff like that it's the thing is with that webtoon is that it's a comedy and it's like really really funny and they don't take themselves seriously but there's like little bits here and there where you're like okay you like the author really thought about like the magic system and how things are so i i've been enjoying it and i'm looking forward to like the 25th chapter because i'm all caught up now i literally like i found it on the front page of like, this manga website that i was on just started reading it and i really enjoyed it well it's just it's so fun honestly i want to read more things that are just don't take themselves too serious because i do love reading like darker fiction as well i'll be the first to admit i do love that but sometimes you just want to watch it and really light-hearted that just doesn't take itself serious whatsoever but yeah that's been something that i've been really enjoying now as you can see here i've like put what you call that the the floor tiles on the sides and that's because i was going to go on with lot adjuster and like shrink it down a bit so that's just going to be there but when i go into lot adjuster and like finagle things about that won't be there no more oh my god i just had a driving lesson right and i just driving is so difficult driving is so hard especially like because i'm the type i just want to as soon as i do my tests my actual like practical driving test i just want to be done with it and be able to get my car and, like, be on the road but there's just so much you have to keep track of when you are on the road especially like unmarked crossroads like having to like look left or right and like having to make it obvious that okay i'm gonna turn here i'm gonna do this even if i'm an, I'm an okay driver like, i feel like i'm a decent driver there are some times where i stall and i do like you know i don't do the best of things but i'm not there speeding and like cutting people off and doing all that crazy stuff like i'm a decent driver but it's just something where it's just there's so much to keep track of it wrecks me out of it it does it does wreck my head a bit oh my god i did recently by recently i mean like just before i started recording this video i was watching a video of a southeast asian um Sema reviewing the four rep pack because i obviously don't play the sims 4 but i like to keep up with it because i am an og sims 4 hater i bought the sims 4 like on release like the full 40 50 quid ever since then there's just been bitterness and like anger in my heart because how dare ea release that to me like i felt personally i felt attacked by the release of the sims 4 this is like before they had toddlers before they had pools before they had ghosts before they had a decent map for everything that they've patched into the game now trash 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 it was a terrible terrible game it is not was it is a terrible game so like i'm always keeping up to date like you'd low-key think i was a fan the way i'm keeping up with it is it healthy probably not but i'm doing it anyway so four reds i'm watching her review four reds she's a southeast asian simmer and of course four reds is like whoop de woo we're so great but like having the southeast asian like representation and then my issue with the sims 4 and like their representation is that like when it comes to like things that like matter so like if they're representing i don't know southeast asia for example or i don't know different places like that they'll never actually get simmers from that culture to like tell them about the culture so to people who aren't of that culture it's like oh yeah cool like you're representing this general vibe this general area but for people who are actually from that area they're like yeah you didn't do your homework and this isn't good so she was saying how like um there are so many things in southeast asia like so many she's talking about 
you could have added like a beach because there's so many like nice beaches that gave examples of really nice beaches in southeast asia like the philippines vietnam xyz she's like you could have added like some jungle some rainforest the whole skylands and skylight thing she was saying how it was she thought it was going to be an event where your sims can go there and like put up the lanterns together but no it just comes it's locked behind a trait that you like have like if your sim doesn't have the trait they just can't do the thing and they can just do it at random times and she was like it didn't feel like there was any thought but i can vividly remember when um the sims 4 was coming out with cottage living they were like we collabed with british simmers like look how great we are for collabing with british simmers but when snowy escape came out and they released it like with comrebi and all that there was no braggadocious claim about collabing with japanese simmers whatsoever and it's not like japanese simmers don't exist like i follow some japanese simmers um one of my favorite speed builders um yukiho sims for japanese simmer and they do like the craziest most detailed builds ever like japanese simmers exist they just don't care to look for them or elevate the people that this content is for and that's how i know ea like they do not care they don't care because how can you sit here and say oh we're doing all this for you know people of color and people from different backgrounds and different whatever the fuck but you don't include them it's just it's so fake to me that's the one thing i don't like about the sims 4 at least with the sims 2 it wasn't like i don't know i wasn't around at the time when sims 2 was coming out like i'm i'm only 21 so i don't know but the sims 2 there's no big massive claim of inclusivity like i don't think they ever made claims about anything like that even with bon voyage and the whole like you can go on vacation you can go on aldi and you can like have a good time there even with that i don't think they were like look at all this beautiful hawaiian culture and how we're representing hawaii and look at this beautiful um i don't know flapjack cuisine that we're representing of the mountain regions and red hair tail. like i don't think they were doing all that i just think they're like in god Aussie, you can do fun stuff like they weren't trying to get too big for their boots and pretend they're doing us a favor like because they aren't doing us a favor like it's so transparent that they just want money from people of color and it's not working because i don't want to buy that shit i want to buy that like i think what it is as well that annoys me the most is that people will see this like face value representation and be like oh isn't it so great that they're representing this culture as if we have to like beg for crumbs it just infuriates me to a degree like let's say the sims i don't let's say the sims 4 releases a pack about west africa now i'm west african i always talk about being british but i don't talk about being west african i was born in west africa and i moved to the uk when i was quite young obviously the accents so like that came out about west african culture west african cuisine the clothing xyz and i was like we don't dress like that this is like this is just very face value you kind of looked at the aesthetic of west africa and you didn't do any actual research into like what goes into it me as a west african like i feel like i have an authority like my voice holds power but ea does not care as long as the top simmers who are all white by the way might i add as long as the top simmers are like this is such great representation other people that watch those simmers aren't gonna like actually do their research because i've got like five white bitches telling me telling them that it's okay i was like why would my favorite simmer lie about it being okay like this should be all right it wasn't until plum bella was like the dark skin tones are bad that ea scrambled to do something but black simmers had been saying this for a while it's just very like annoying of course ea is a corporation and they don't actually need to care but it's very annoying that they're pretending that they do that's one thing about me if they just straight up said we don't like black people so we're not gonna add your skin tones i'd be like do you know what fair fair enough <laughs> at least you're being honest i'd rather you be open and honest that you don't care about us but it's the fact that they'll say all oh, this about inclusivity and being like so accepting of different cultures and different skin tones but it's not reflected in the game whatsoever and then when you start adding different cultures not everybody wants to be representation represented which is cool i'm not saying you're not allowed to be represented but now you're like biting off more than you can chew because even the people you're representing now it's clear you're not doing a very good job with that are you i don't know it's just something that 
annoys me and I hate when people make representation a political thing because my identity isn't political like me existing as a black African person is not a political statement it is a fact <laughs> like I don't I don't understand that that's what infuriates me when people are like we need to stop getting political about the LGBT and the and the red blah, 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 blah. like no 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 this is a politi political if you like leave your house like interact with people in the real world you will meet trans people you'll meet gay people you will meet lesbians you will meet bisexual people like that's just a fact of life you will meet people from different countries all the time you'll meet immigrants you'll be like i don't i don't know what to tell you trying to make it a political thing it's not political it's just facts i live in the uk i'm constantly speaking to people of different walks of life different ages different backgrounds like that's not political to be like oh wait why is she from like manchester like what like don't be stupid <laughs> i don't know it's just people just annoy me especially ea i think i'm low-key kind of anti-establishment i don't like corporations i'll never trust a corporation if a corporation says one thing i'll never trust it i'm the type of person if i see a advert i'm just immediately like fuck you like you want me to buy th something i hate you like i hate corporations i hate being advertised to but i dislike when people take handouts from companies i've always just had a thing against like game changers and it's not them personally it's the fact that they're in cahoots with ea that i just think is weird i don't like it <laughs> and it sounds so petty and childish when i say it but it's just like i do not like ea as a company they are disgusting and the way they treat their workers is vile so i don't think i would ever want to like be in cahoots with or be friendly with ea like that's just not something i vibe with obviously i feel like i could say that because i'm in a comfortable position where i don't have to rely on like video income like, i have a job outside of this you know i'm i'm doing other things i'm living with my parents right now so it's just like it's one of them where i don't have to rely on like online and shit like that but if i did maybe i'll <laughs> maybe i'll change my mind and be all off sitting on daddy ears lap being like oh my god this new expansion pack was great but i don't think within myself i would ever get to that point i don't view me being like a professional youtuber i'm just doing this for fun i'm doing this because i enjoy it and any money that i may get in the future it was never really about that so it's one of them but i've been rambling for way too long <laughs> this is the lovely little pictures Hopefully you had a great time with me ranting about the establishment and ranting about EA. Yeah, it's been so nice being with you again today. Tara for now. <laughs>